All right, YouTube, it's your boy D coming right back at you with the uh, with the second half of the, the uh, Sixth Order versus Fourth Order um, tutorial. Okay, so what, what you see right here, this this is uh, Google SketchUp. At least I still call it Google SketchUp. Actually, the, the company uh, is called Tremble these days. Uh, and it's, it's by a company. Uh, it, it originally started out as Google's. Uh, tool now is owned by a company named Tremble. I don't know what the name change indicates other than maybe someone bought it from Google. Maybe I don't know, but uh, it's a 3D modeling program. Uh, it's, it's, it's more geared toward uh, architecture, you know, uh, carpenters, things of that nature. Uh, in this case, we're building a box. So, this is the schematics for my six order bandpass I recently built. And I did a, a demo of that in video one. This is going to be video two of this uh, series. And I may do a third video as well. I don't know. I may be able to explain everything here today. So basically what you see here is you see a driver inside of, a, of, a, uh, of, a, of two different chambers. This is chamber two. This is my rear chamber. This, is, this chamber is, is tuned to uh, 30 hertz. And this chamber right here, which the speaker faces is facing, is actually tuned to one cubic foot. I mean, it's tuned to 50 hertz and is actually one cubic foot. This is two cubic foot tuned to 30 hertz. And this over here is one cubic foot tuned to 50 hertz. Okay, so what is a sixth order and what's the difference between a sixth order and a fourth order? This is something that I wish I would have ex ex I would have explained in the first video. The difference between a, uh, I'll explain a little better anyway. The difference between a uh, sixth order and a fourth order is that one actually has uh, a sealed section and a port and, and a ported section, and this one here is a sixth order which has two ported sections, two ported sections. So that means that uh, you have one driver. With two different chambers. In the fourth order, one of your chambers is sealed and the other chamber is ported. In the sixth order, both chambers are ported and they are tuned to different frequencies. Uh, so why do people not do six order band passes as much as they do a ported band pass or sealed, uh, I mean a ported enclosure or a sealed enclosure? Uh, for one, a sealed enclosure is very simple. It's very easy to do. It's very little math to do. Um, all you have to do is go by whatever it is that your um, that the speakers manufacturer uh, suggests. If they say one cubic foot, build your box as one cubic foot. Cut you a hole in it for your driver, and you're good to go. It's pretty much going to perform the uh, the way it's supposed to perform. Um, a ported enclosure is a little bit more difficult than that. It has a little bit of math to do. Uh, but then again, most uh, manufacturers will send out the uh, measurements that you would have to uh, um, implement when doing or building a ported enclosure for a specific woofer. So all you have to do is just match up the port area, which is uh, length and width of the, of the opening of the port, and then give it the length or depth that they uh, specify and you're good to go. It's pretty much that easy. But when you talk about a fourth order band pass, or in this case, a sixth order band pass, things get a little bit more difficult because now you have many other things to, uh, to factor in, like uh, you know frequencies canceling each other out, um, things of that nature. What is the different specs for the woofer? And you know how do those specs, uh, how, how, how do those specs affect the way that this woofer is going to perform inside of this enclosure that you're building for it. So all these things have to be taken into account when building a six-order bandpass. So you may be wondering, how are you to know these numbers? How are you to know what the FX of a uh, woofer is or, or what the Q2S of a uh, woofer is or what's the VAS? The RE, the LE, the X max, the Z rating, the SPL, the BL, the diameter. What what does all these things mean, and how are they implemented, and how do I know if my woofer is good for a fourth order or sixth order bandpass? Where well, there's another piece of software that I use, 
that I'm going to show you guys next. And it is called uh, Win ISD. As a matter of fact, I have the luxury of dual screens here. So I'll just uh, pan over here. And this screen right here is my Win ISD. Let me see if I can tilt it a little bit for you guys. And this is my Win ISD Pro screen right here. So for those who are not familiar with Win ISD Pro, this is basically where you crunch all your numbers at right here. This program right here helps you when you are trying to figure out how big to make the box in relation to the port, how, uh, what, uh, what frequency is my woofer, and how would it perform inside of this box. These are the main two things you need to know because not all woofers uh, perform well inside of fourth order and sixth orders. You would either come out sounding very crappy or you would destroy the driver itself. So in this case, I'm going to zoom in on the, uh, the two smaller um, boxes or dialog boxes that you see over here and kind of explain what's going on here. Okay. So as you can see over here, this is the first uh, box right here. And this is a box that I built previous. And this is for my SCAR Audio VVX 12 version 2. And as you can see, I now have the tab box clicked. So it's showing you uh, some information on the box. Uh, as you can see, it's going to be a, a six order bandpass. Um, as you can also see, if you come down, the volume of the box is going to be two and a half cubic foot. Okay. And this is also going to be tuned to, uh, this is going to be, the, I'm sorry, this is going to be the front chamber. This is going to be the rear chamber. The front chamber, which is actually the right side of this screen that you see here, that's actually my front chamber. It's tuned to 30 hertz. It's bigger than the other one, and it's tuned lower. And that's what you see up here. 2.5 cubic feet, and it's tuned to 30 hertz. And over on the other side, my rear chamber is actually tuned, I mean, it's actually one cubic foot, and it's tuned to 50 hertz, okay? So we're gonna go down, and the reason why I have two different, and it, as you can see, some of these specs right here, if you wanna know what the, these specs are to your speaker or your, or, your, or your driver, just go to your manufacturer's website or look at the user manual that come with your speaker. Most time you can download these manuals though from directly from the manufacturer's website. And to kind of like to do a comparison, um, as you can see, another thing I want to point out before I do the comparison is this color code. It's purple. So in this graph to your left here, we're going to see in a minute that the purple is going to indicate the six orders uh, frequency response. You're going to see this in a minute. But I also got down here in the green. It's the same speaker. This is the VVX-12, as you can see here in the bar. The VVX-12 version 2. And this is also the exact same measurements. But up here you have different volume and different tuning. So why is this different? And why does this look different? It's just a vented enclosure, ported or vented enclosure, right? One port. All right. So this is a box that I demoed to you guys earlier. In my other videos, you can you can go look through my archive and see it. Um, it's one in there. It got in the back of a, a SUV, and it's um, it's doing some doing some work. Actually, I had that tuned to. I actually that was four cubic feet. To be honest with you, it was four cubic feet. But uh, actually, right now I have it at three cubic feet. That same box. I still got this box, and it sound damn good. But I always wanted to do a six order band pass. I tried one in the past, I failed at it, and I wanted to do another one. So this is the results. So that's this is what you have here. Okay, so you guys are probably wondering, what's up with these two pieces of software, right? Why why go to the length of you know doing the whole software and crunching all these numbers? So what's the importance of it? I mean, obviously the importance of it is having accurate numbers right and this saves you time and money as well so before you cut any piece of wood before you purchase any piece of wood you know you already know um first off let's go here before doing anything you already know how you need to build your stuff
Because Win ISD is going to tell you that. It's going to tell you exactly what you need to do with the space that you have. So if you're wondering, I, I didn't, I didn't, I should, I guess I should have showed you guys this as well. If you go up here in these tabs and you click vents, that tells you, that, that gives you domain over uh, vent, the, the length and width of your vent as well, or your ports, right? And the shape. You can also do a round shape here. I'm not going to click it because it's going to jack that up. You don't have to go back in and redo it. I don't want to do it. But it also has a circle uh, shape as well. But, of course, I'm dealing with wood, so I like to, to, to do all my uh, ports uh, as rectangles. All right, you got plot. You can do your plot ground. That's your SPL stuff. You can also uh, save your project, different name or whatever. But these two boxes are going to be, your, I mean, tabs are going to be your most important. Vent length, length and width. It actually gives you your port noise is what this is. Vent, vent mop is going to be your, uh, your, port, your port noise. How audible or how well can you hear the air breathing in and out of your port? Right now, it's in the green. If I was to put some stupid number on there, it'll turn red. And if I was to make my, right now, my my, my vent, the uh, height is 16, and the width is uh, 2.5 on my front chamber. If I was to make this very, very small, let's just say, first, I'm going I'm to change it anyway. If I was to make this very narrow, you see the vent mock changed. Because I changed the, the area, the uh, the port area. But if I was to make this even, an even smaller number, like one inch, watch the vent mark. It went all the way up to 0 .09. That means that the air going in and out of this, you're making the the uh, the the, uh, the vent or the port more narrow, and the air sucking in and out of it, you're going to start hearing noise in a minute. So if I put 0 .5, half an inch, look at that. Once you hit point one, it's, it, it puts you in the red because it's telling you, hey, man, you're going to have a lot of port noise with, you know, with the woofer. And that can actually damage your woofer, in case you guys didn't know that. It can actually damage your woofer. So the smaller or the more narrow, narrow the port is, the more port noise you got. So let me bag out of here and put it back to what it was, which is 2.5, and bring my, my, uh, my port noise back to a reasonable standpoint okay all right so what i went ahead and did was change that 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 volume to four cubic feet because four cubic feet is what i had that video playing at uh that box i cut that box down to three cubic feet but in the video where i demoed it it was actually four cubic feet so i brought it back to four cubic feet here to let you guys see what the graph will look like in a comparison against what i have now if y'all like that demo I did in the back of the truck, then you're definitely going to love what uh, what the six-order bandpass can do for this, this driver, and I'm going to show you that. All right, we're going to swing over, and it's two things about this graph I want you guys to pay attention to. Uh, if you notice, if you follow my mouse, you have numbers at the bottom, and you have numbers to the side. So what do these, these, these numbers mean? Um, if, you, if you also look at the red line here, and you have a purple line here. So the red line, is this is 0 dB. What does 0 dB mean? That means that at the point of normal hearing, this will be your flattest response that you can get right here. It's not too loud. It's not too low. On a scale of, 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 of decibels, of hearing, of loudness, this is perfect harmony right here. Okay? So you're not too loud. You're not too low. You're normal. So what is the purple? The purple means that the noise has decreased to a point where you can actually notice. You actually got a very noticeable, uh, that you actually can notice a decrease. So no one wants to get near purple. You want to stay away from purple and, and as close to red as possible. Okay? But if you notice, look at my box. Look at the purple line in comparison to the green line. Right? Look at the purple line in comparison to the green line. So the green line is the box that y'all seen on the demo. And as you can see, it's peaking around what? You got 30 hertz, then you got 40 hertz, and you got 50 hertz. So that box is peaking around 
what I got it tuned to around 37 hertz. That was the recommended uh, specification for it. That's what I went with, and that's what it's performing at. But as you can see, it actually crosses the red line at around 32 hertz. So it'll do 32 hertz very well. It'll do, and it, it, it hits the line again. It crosses back over the line here at about 60 hertz. So you got a, a, a good response in between 30 and 60 hertz, but it's more boomier right here. So what, what hurt is that? At about 40 hertz, I'm going to say. 37 to 40. I'm going to just say 40 hertz. It's booming the shit out of 40 hertz. It's, it's very booming. It peaks right there at 40 hertz. Okay? But the, this was the problem with that box. That box performed good in my audio, in my car, because that's, that's the type of music that I listen to, but I wanted a home entertainment system. So that's why I built the six order, because I didn't, I didn't just want a box that can perform at one peak, at one frequency very, very well. I wanted it to perform not only during my music, but I also wanted it to perform during my movies and all my other sound effects and things like what I'm watching, like playing my game, all my explosions, all that I wanted it to sound very, very good. And even if I wanted to do some screw music or some slow music, it'll, it'll do that too, like you know, some decaf or something. It'll do that as well. So that's why I decided to build a six order bandpass. And as you can see with the six order bandpass, it has two peak responses. It has two peak responses. So what's the advantage of this? That means that my 30 hertz port is doing its damn job. And my 50 hertz port is doing its damn job, which gives me almost, it gives me almost a flat response. It dips one dB. 2 dB, 2 decibels, before regaining itself and actually go a little bit over. But it dips 1 dB, 2 dBs, and then it, it comes right back up. So that means that even with even the box that I just got rid of, it still performs just as good as that other box. But at the two peaks that I needed to perform at, this is my sound effects, my movies, my decaf, all that, outperforms that old box. And my daily driving music outperforms that old box. So this is the best of both worlds, the six order band pass is. But this right here only do one thing. All the other frequencies that it does, look how low these free, look how much higher this is than the other frequencies. That's why I got rid of that box. If you want to know what dB that is, I think that's like uh, 5 dBs above red. Yeah. 5 dBs above red across the board. On average, if you were just to look at this, this box is performing one, two, three. Because this is my dip. The lowest it goes is one, two, three, four, four dB, four dBs above uh, a four dB increase across. The, it's almost a flat response. Four dB is what I'm averaging across 30 to 50 hertz. 30 to 50 hertz. I'm averaging 4 dBs. So that's the, the advantage of a 6 order over just a regular vented or ported enclosure. That vented or, or one single vented enclosure can only do one frequency well. But the 6 order bandpass can do a broad range of it. It can do in between two frequencies and, and what's in between very well. So you get a, a more broader uh frequency range and output hopefully that wasn't too confusing for some of you guys i hope i didn't bore you or make you click away <laughs> uh but for you for those of you who uh who, who actually watched the entire video i really do appreciate it and i do have some more some more videos coming in relation to this to try to make things a little bit more simple as well so uh just just hang in there and don't forget to uh to like the video if you got something out of it subscribe click that bell icon to get more videos like this whenever i put them out to get the notifications anyway and um and if you feel as though i could have done something a little better just leave a comment in the section below and i'll try to answer it as best i can um but until next time it's your boy d and i'm out